Today, 15 things every reefer should know about setting up a brand new saltwater aquarium. What Matthew and I wish somebody had told us day one. All right, number one, a direct answer. You didn't know it maybe, but there's two tanks here. One of them is a saltwater tank and there's also a reef tank. Both are stunning displays, but a saltwater aquarium is closer to a pet and a reef tank is closer to a science project or hobby. And I think that's a really important distinction, especially for new hobbyists to understand. You don't have to go with a reef tank loaded with SPS corals and soft, I mean, just, just back to the brim because that's gonna be a lot more difficult to take care of. You could do a very simple saltwater tank, put in a few pieces of rock and then add some beautiful fish and then it's easier and it's more just like having a pet. Yep, name them and uh, <laughs> Jerry is happy to see you every time you come with the food. Number two, a saltwater aquarium is actually just fish and it's really easy to take care of. It might even be easier than a freshwater tank. Sounds blasphemous. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? That was what I was told the very, very first time I asked somebody, you know, probably 20 years ago, like, how hard is a saltwater aquarium? They looked at me and said, it's easier than all the freshwater tanks you see here. Mm. Uh, it was a uh, sea level, no longer exists. Okay. But they told me that and I said, well, how could that be? And they're like, well, in all these freshwater tanks, you got all these filters, under gravel filters, everything needs to be cleaned. In the saltwater tank over here, the rock is the filter. Yeah. We put rock in it, do your water changes, and everything is fine. And I'm like, that has turned out to be yeah. true. Uh, if the only goal you have is throw in some nice, beautiful fish, yeah. uh, name them Jerry or whatever you want to name them, <laughs> uh, and have them be part of a stunning display in your house and a pet, Really, it is very, very, very easy to do, potentially even easier than freshwater. Number three, a reef tank. The thing that I've been engaged in for 20 years now uh, is totally different. Yeah, it's not just having some pet fish. It's quite a bit more than that. It is a complete collection of animals that actually live together and need to live together harmoniously. We're talking about things like the rock, the corals, the shrimp, the cleanup crew, snails, anemones. They all have unique needs and they all interact together in unique ways. Sometimes they're aggressive to each other. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. they eat each other. Uh, sometimes they cause uh, other kind of pest related problems in there. The reef tank that grows all the corals has more light, grows more algae and stuff. And there just becomes what we called earlier, a little bit of a science project and a little bit of a hobby because now what you have is not just a tank full of fish. You have this like ecosystem that you're caring for. And there's so many inputs and outputs that you're just constantly learning something new and cool about the tank. And that's why so many people call it a hobby. Number four, another blasphemy. People won't believe this, but a reef tank isn't actually that hard. No, it really isn't that hard. It's the finding of the information and trustworthy information that is difficult. Honestly, I would say 90% of the effort here is acquiring the right, trustworthy, good knowledge. 10% is just application of that knowledge. Succeeding, super easy. Failing, really, really hard. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, like for me, I was probably 4,000 posts into various forums, digging up all the information, yeah. trying to assemble the puzzle, trying this, failing at that, trying that, trying to figure it all out until I found a mentor. Uh, and for me, his name was David Greger, lives locally. And I just decided to emulate the success that he was having and he helped me and all of a sudden, it got easy. Oh, the exact same is true for me. When I started in this hobby in 2014, I almost didn't do it because it was so confusing. I watched some of your videos, I watched some of other people's videos, but there just wasn't a source for it. So my mentor was actually New York Stilo, who had these amazing videos at the time, and he actually started making videos again if you want to check them out. Okay, so here's the caveat <laughs> in all this. If you go ask the average reefer and said, hey man, is reefing hard? A hundred out of a hundred would tell, oh my God, it's so hard. Uh, but <laughs> and then if you clarify that question and said, is it the actual tasks that you're doing no. that it's hard? Or is it collecting all that information and trying to figure out who to listen to and who not to listen to and how to apply it all together? Like, oh, number two. Yeah. All right, number five, a nuanced version of that. And then we're going to move on. But this is really important for you to hear. It'll save you so much time. A single source of information, of cohesive information, is going to be so much more helpful. I can't even quantify it. 10, 100 times more helpful than endlessly searching YouTube, Google, the forums, and then piecemealing things together. Because the reality is 
there are infinite number of ways to do things correctly, but if you pick and choose, you might put them together in an incorrect way. So finding someone that's successful and following them is the way to go. I've actually found this to be true in a couple of different ways. Like uh, David was able to help me mm -hmm. be successful with my first uh, home tank. But then also I found mentors that were like on Reef Central and stuff at yeah. the time, which is like kind of a, a dated forum. Uh, but at the time it was really, really big. But what I found was if I went through, you know, the general public and I just kind of asked questions, it turned out it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. It is. Most of the people that are answering my questions were the people that answered, asked those same questions 60 days ago. <laughs> right. uh, and they haven't really figured out whether or not it's worked. But then they had these expert forums mm -hmm. where I could go ask Dr. Ron, or you yep. could ask uh, Anthony Kelfo, or you could ask, you know, experts. And so, like, I wanted to farm corals. And so I went to Anthony Kelfo, who, like, really did a lot of propagation at the time. And so I found that that person would give me consistently good advice and their advice actually connected to itself because they used all of it together rather than piecemealing it all together. So if you can, you know, it could be from a fish store, it could be Beerus TV here, it could be any number of channels mm -hmm. for you. It was New York Steelio. We noticed that he actually uh, resurfaced <laughs> he did, the other he did. day. Uh, you could go and find out from any one of those people, just follow one of them and almost certainly you'd be successful, at least way more successful than if you ask 100 people and build it together. All right, number six, get into the meat of it. Smaller tanks are actually a lot easier. Something like this Desme here is really easy to set up, but a larger tank, you're going to be more successful. And you might wonder, why would that be? Well, because mistakes happen quickly in a smaller volume of water and more slowly in a larger volume. You can add all sorts of bad things and in a larger system, they're not gonna accumulate that fast, but they're gonna accumulate really fast in a small tank. Yeah, to give you an example of that, think of like a 20 gallon tank and let's say I made a couple of decisions, I was dosing something inaccurately and it was the type of thing that would show up in about 60 days. Okay. Uh, on a 100 gallon tank, which is five times as that big, it would take 300 <laughs> days for that problem to materialize. And my first tank was actually a 90 gallon reef. And I believe that part of the reason that I was so successful with that tank is it gave me that buffer to make yeah. mistakes. So one of the questions is, well, why does this little teeny decimate uh, actually exist on the planet then? This is for pros. Yeah, right? <laughs> totally. I mean, you, you would think that this is for brand, brand new reefers, yeah. uh, but uh, you know it could be. And in, in fact, if you are going to be a brand new reefer and use this thing, and you follow one piece of advice, which is you know do like a one gallon water change yes. every single week on it, you will probably be successful. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you will almost certainly fail. I hate to say it that stark, uh, but yes. If you think about it, smaller tanks, really easy to set up. That's why they're so popular for newer reefers. But bigger tanks, if you want to be successful and you know that there's going to be speed bumps, bigger tank is going to be more successful for you. Number seven, there are two sizes that a lot of us here at BRS actually recommend to new reefers. When budget is a primary driver, it's called a 40 gallon breeder. Right, so this is a tank that is about yay big, 40 gallons, and gives ample room yeah. for a handful of mistakes. Most people will be successful with that. If you want like a slightly nicer looking one, it's called an E170, which is about yeah. that size. But uh, what has room for mistakes is a 120 gallon tank, right? So uh, I told you I did a 90 as my first tank. I wish I had done 120 because that extra six inches from front to back allows you to do way, way, way cooler aquascapes in it. You will never regret it. And the reality is the tank only costs a little bit more and all the equipment will basically be the same. Oh, totally. So, and not only is there more room for mistakes, but there's gonna be so much more room for various fish and livestock. You're gonna find in a 40 gallon breeder, there's a lot of things you can't put in that breeder that you can put in the 120. Okay, there's a good point. Now you might think that the 120 is more expensive, but you know what's really more expensive? Setting up a 40 gallon breeder and then sending up 120 next year. <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, in either case though, both of those are really, really good size tanks for brand new reefers. Water changes aren't that big. They give ample room for mistakes and you won't be disappointed. All right, number eight, there is one thing that actually makes setting up a new tank expensive and it doesn't have to be that way, but there's some benefits. Yeah a sump and all the filtration that you put in the sump is largely, honestly, what makes this hobby somewhat expensive, but it will reduce the dependence on those water changes. And in the long run, it can definitely be cheaper. 
there's a bunch of reasons for a sump. It'll expand the water volume down there a little bit. You might go from 40 gallons to you know, 60, 50 yeah. or 60. Uh, but also you get to hide all the heaters and all that stuff. But it gets expensive because now I got a skimmer, I got mm. filter socks, I got all the heaters down there, I got all the plumbing, I got all, all the overflows, all the stuff that went into it. So uh, it's really, all that gear is really just there to reduce those dependent mm -hmm. on water changes. Water changes can add up in the long run, all the little buckets of salt. Yeah. Uh, so you can save money with all this stuff. But today, in the short term, if you don't have a lot of money to do this, maybe going sumpless could be the right option. Number nine, I just stole the thunder. Okay, but it's important to repeat, in the short term, replacing the sump and all that fancy filtration that goes with it with water changes, it can actually make this hobby a lot cheaper to start. And for some people, that's really important and that's really attractive and they can at least get their hands wet and start learning about this hobby. A glass box with some simple water changes, it can really take you a long way. It could, it could honestly take you forever in the hobby if you wanted it to. If you want to, go ahead and look at this E170 that we're about to show you. Uh, if this looks like a successful reef tank <laughs> uh, that you would like to emulate and say, yep, if I did that, I would be happy. This has zero filtration yeah. on it. No skimmer, no filter socks, no anything. The only thing that we did on this was daily water changes, small little amount, but you could probably even replace that with a weekly and a monthly. They're just gonna have to be a little bit more aggressive water changes. But if you do that, you don't need all of the stuff. In the long term, all that salt might be a little bit more expensive, but in the short term, you can get up and run it. Number 10, a tank that you put in a space that you spend time is 10, 100, 1,000 times more enjoyable than one that you hide somewhere. It's out of sight, out of mind. Not only is it more enjoyable, but you're more likely to interact with it and care for it because you see it all the time and you want your friends and family to come over to think, hey, he or she's doing a great job. It looks great. Okay, so where does that come in? It's when somebody's trying to decide between, do I have a 120 gallon tank upstairs mm -hmm. in my living room or you know near my kitchen or wherever where I'm there all the time, but what I really want is that super mega. You know, I want like a 210 or a 180 gallon tank or something like that. Well, those most commonly fit down in the basement yeah. and they're pretty heavy, so it's probably better. Better than in the basement. There. Yeah. Okay, which is great, man. If you're the type of family that goes down in your basement every single day and that's where you watch TV and all that stuff, perfect place yeah. for it. If you can't count the amount of times that you've been down there in the last month, like if you're looking at it, like, I've only been there down there twice. Yeah. Uh, it's a terrible place. If you're thinking, no, 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 because the tank's down there, I'll be down there. A uh, vast majority of cases that it's turns out, out to be true and the tank fails because out of sight, out of mind. So my best counsel to any new reefer is pick whatever size fits in a space in a room that you spend a lot of time in because the fish will be happier, the corals yep. will be happier, your family will be happier, and all of your guests that come over, the first thing they'll see is this really impressive creation that you've done. Number 11, our end goal here isn't just an aquarium or a glass box full of fish. It really is a slice of that reef, a slice of the Great Barrier Reef, a slice of Fiji in your home. And that's actually kind of crazy to think about. Those people that respect the ecology and understand all that is going into it are going to love this hobby for a long time and have the best results. I guess if I was going to boil it down, if you just want an aquarium and a glass box of fish, do a saltwater aquarium. Yeah. And I say that, like, I think I'm gonna set one of these up in my house. Totally. I've never had a saltwater tank uh, that's just fish before, mm -hmm. but I want some of those big aggressive fish. I, I want the lionfish, I want the eel, I want some of those triggers that eat coral and stuff. The kids I, will love it. I want to do big angel fish yeah. that eat coral. I want those color and I want to bring that in, and you're right, my small kids are probably going to love it more than <laughs> yes. the coral. So like, at different times, you might want a different thing, but if it's just an aquarium or glass box of fish, this probably doesn't require the same level of attention. But if you are going to do a reef tank, it's true. If you think about it as a little ecosphere, you pulled that ecosphere out of Fiji or out of Bali and you brought it to Minnesota or you brought it to the desert in Palm Springs, and now you're its caregiver and you have all these little inputs. And if it's fun and you respect it, it will produce the best results. My number one takeaway from this conversation is you can only learn by doing. There are a lot of people I've helped over the years who are rightly so intimidated. They start listening to us, we use a lot of jargon. It can be really confusing, but the reality is you're only gonna learn by setting something up. Just be gentle with yourself. No, if, if you're a beginner, you're going to make mistakes. Things 
are going to go wrong. You're going to get nuisance pests in your tank. But if you take them all as a learning opportunity and not a failure, you're going to succeed. Yes, it's just like any other hobby, whether it be RC, home uh, brewing, uh, whether or not you're into uh, sports or baking, fishing or anything. baking, anything you want to be doing. All of it is going to be, hey, I learned something, I got better. Learned something, mm -hmm. I got better. Learned something, I got better. And most of it in the beginning is, did I find the right recipe? Did I find the right mentor or person to listen to, to help me you know, really find that path yeah. as fast as possible? In that spirit, the number one thing I think we can help you with is that Beerus TV has been here helping reefers and saltwater aquariums build their dreams since 2008. Mm -hmm. YouTube's only actually been here since 2006, wow. uh, actually. <laughs> uh, we've been guiding them through the science and supporting technology the entire time. Today, over 100 million reefers and their tanks wow. have been served. We are here to help you. So if you're interested in something related to reef tanks, Beerus TV has probably got it. Go search for it. We also have series like the five minute guide. If you're brand new to reefing, if you want one series that compiles it all together and the five minutes is there for a reason in a short digestible chunks, it's really easy to follow. That series is probably the best. Now, if you're a nerd like you and me, and you really want to dive in the deep end, get that 120 gallon tank or something larger up, 52 Weeks of Reefing is the best series that we've ever produced. It's probably taught more reefers oh, yeah. on what to do than any other series on YouTube. If you check that out, it will teach you almost everything you need to know about reefing. Learn something unexpected about setting up a saltwater tank? Well, there's more in our new reefer Did You Know playlist right here. That five minute guide to saltwater aquariums right here and 52 Weeks of Reefing here. New episodes released every single Monday and Friday.